we continue to watch this. Um, we're hoping for some information to come from us, um, come to us to better educate you about what has happened at this high school in Dallas today. You, you see a number of officers there, number of paramedic vehicles. Uh, again, we believe this happened within the last hour or so. And we've reached out to a number of people connected to the district. We've not yet heard back. Obviously, you can understand they're trying to get a handle on what happened and um, understand so they can address the media. But we continue to see these kinds of incidents in our schools across America and in Texas. Uh, and of course, this is a, always a hold your breath moment for not only parents, but all of the public, not only for that campus, but for our community. Guns in schools, guns around schools in what are supposed to be gun-free zones. Uh, they're only gun-free to the degree that people uh, make a decision to follow the rules and follow the law. Don't know, again, what happened here. Don't know the conflict. Don't know whether it was between two people or whether someone came to school, uh, you know, with some intent to do more harm. What we know is, um, and thankfully, one person, we believe that to be a student, shot at Wilmer Hutchins High School. And based on what we know, we think that student shot in the leg. Uh, prayerfully, uh, no arteries uh, were hit and damaged, and this won't be a life-threatening injury. We're waiting on all of that information. You see uh, the heavy police presence across the campus, but you also see the posture of the officers and how they are walking, how they are moving. It appears as if, again, they have tamped down their response, and that may be a good indication to us that things have eased or ceased even, but we're waiting for the official word from those on the scene. We do have crews on their way to the Wilbur Hutchins High School campus. We have two crews on their way, uh, and we expect their arrival shortly. They were in other parts of the community today developing and working on their stories, news gathering for you for Fox 4 News at 5 when this breaking news uh, came across the desk. Okay, Dan Godwin is going to join me here as we continue to look on uh, this incident and try to understand and get more information about what has happened there at Wilmer Hutchins High School this morning. Uh, the response is what you would expect it to be and want it to be in a situation like this. You want massive police presence. You need that because as they're responding to the 911 calls for shots fired or for a person shot, and we learn that it's at the school, we don't really know what they're going to find or encounter until they get there. The facts of what happened, they don't even know those as they're arriving. Is it one shooter? Is there more shooters? Is this a typical, what we know to be the horrors, Dan Godwin, of a school shooting? Or is this something uh, limited uh, and far less, which we certainly hope and believe it is today. Yeah, certainly, Sean. Uh, lots and lots of questions at this point. As you uh, alluded to, the facts are very fluid at this point. We don't know the circumstances surrounding this shooting, uh, what led up to it, what was the motive. Uh, and at this point, we're still waiting to find out where the shooting occurred, whether it was inside a building at Wilmer Hutchins High School or perhaps outside in a parking lot or in a field somewhere. Uh, our last report is that the suspect fled and ran towards the school's athletic complex, but that is not confirmed at this point. Uh, you can see, as of course, from Sky 4, as Sean was talking about, a very, very strong uh, response from police and other first responders, paramedics, certainly the kind of response you would want to see, you would expect to see. Uh, it does not appear what we are talking about now is a, an active shooter situation, but of course any kind of outbreak of violence like this in a school is going to generate the strongest possible response, and that is what we are seeing. Again, the, the facts of the case as we know them now, uh, about an hour ago perhaps, there was a report of one student shot 
at Wilmer Hutchins High School. Uh, that student, from what we understand, was shot in the leg, was transported to a hospital. Uh, we're not getting any information, uh, any additional information about that student's exact condition right now. Uh, after the shooting, apparently, as, as we mentioned, the uh, suspect fled the scene, uh, running towards the school's athletic complex. Uh, uh, an active search is underway right now to try and locate uh, that student. And, of course, we are awaiting uh, official word from the police uh, officials there as to exactly what happened, what they can tell us right now. But of course, they are completely focused right on the on, on tracking down the uh, the suspected shooter. And they are, as far as briefing the news media, that is something on their mind, but that's not going to be necessarily the highest priority right now. Uh, we are also trying to find out uh, what is happening with the school right now as far as uh, uh, lockdowns or reunifications with students and parents. Our understanding is that there is no threat right now to anyone in the school after this uh, shooting, but of course all of the precautions are going to be taken and uh, as we can see from this distance on this uh, Sky 4 shot, you can certainly see uh, how many vehicles are there. You can get an idea about the magnitude of this response, again, with police from different jurisdictions uh, on the scene. Uh, and we can see also that, uh, yeah, they are, they are conferring at this point, and as Sean was talking about, based on the the, the posture, the intensity of the officers we're seeing right now, uh, it certainly does not appear that we're talking about an active shooter situation, which of course is a, a tremendous relief, uh, you know, given the uh, events in recent years that we've all, that we've all seen and, and looked on, uh, the, the other heartbreaking events that have happened uh, with schools and violence. Again, uh, this is live pictures now. We've got a camera on the ground. It's one of the crews that we have sent to Wilmer Hutchins High School. Uh, we are trying to gather as much, as much information as we can about this incident. Again, uh, maybe an hour ago, perhaps less, uh, a report uh, came to us of a student who was shot in the leg at Wilmer Hutchins High School. As far as where it occurred on campus, we, we aren't sure yet. Okay, uh, I've been talking to one of my sources. This is unconfirmed uh, officially from the district, but I've been talking to one of my sources inside the Wilma Hutchins High School. I can tell you, it, it, based on what I've been told, a student came to school with a gun, uh, entered the campus, entered the school, shot another student, and fled. According to the person that I have been speaking with, um, that person believes the shooter uh, may very well be in custody at this moment. That would be great news yeah. if we are there, if that person has been captured. Again, Dan Godwin, as we look at the response, as we look at the posture of the officers standing around, as we see what appears to be a group of students or civilians, folk here in plain clothes, uh, at the bottom left of your screen, standing, uh, it appears that there's no longer potential harm on the campus or around the school. That would be the best news at this moment. Yeah, and of course, a certain amount of interpretation is required at this point as a story like this unfolds. But uh, Sean certainly makes a, a good point. We're not seeing officers running at a very fast rate to, and taking up positions at, at different parts of the campus, as you would expect in an active shooter situation. Certainly there are lots of officers there, uh, but uh, at this point, the, you know, based on the intensity level we're just able to observe on these live pictures, uh, as Sean was talking about, uh, perhaps it's a situation where the shooter is in custody. That's something we're gonna try to find out. All right, and as we, again, as we look at these live pictures, uh, we see officers standing around and they're talking I got a sense that my source is right at this moment, that the threat is gone. Uh, now there'll come many questions later that folks will have to ferret out and find the answers to uh, as we go forward. 
Um, but the best news could be that the threat is gone, that the person responsible uh, is in custody, and that process will be a, a different process. We're going to find out how the victim is, and, and we'll later today learn, uh, come to understand what brought this about. I mean, there's no acceptable excuse. Uh, people have conflicts, and it may just very well be two people had a conflict that had either started in school or came to school from their neighborhood and spilled over into this incident and this scene uh, today, disrupting education uh, and, you know what, traumatizing students and staff at that school. Yeah, and, uh, and Sean, you were talking about earlier, you were able to make contact with uh, someone with knowledge of the situation. And again, based on what you were able to find out, it, it was a case where someone entered the school building earlier this morning with a firearm. And so that would indicate that the shooting, from what we understand, again, uh, uh, took place inside a, a building at Wilmer Hutchins High School. And then the, uh, the suspect, from what we understand, exited the building and started running away from the campus and was headed, last seen apparently, uh, unconfirmed, but headed towards the athletic complex. But uh, there are some indications that, that, that the suspect may be in custody. And um, yeah, again, and folks know this, our viewers know that facts are sketchy right now and these types of scenes, as we even see state troopers there, I'm, I'm sure every law enforcement in the area, the county, the sheriff's department, state troopers, uh, Dallas police, Dallas ISD police, they're the lead investigators on this, but just looking at people, looking at the officers, uh, those in plain clothes who have shown up and uh, others, I mean, it looks like this is over in terms of the immediate harm uh, and the potential harm to others. The damage, though, physically to at least one person, and that appears to be some parents there uh, as well, and the obviously the emotional damage to students and staff. There's, you see Fox 4's Alex Boyer uh, right there on scene. He is there, Stephen Dial is arriving or there as well. And just so our producers know, if I get a call, I'm gonna step away for a minute because I'm expecting my people to call me back with what they know. And it was interesting to see what may well be parents there from that ground camera we have just outside Wilmer Hutchins High School. Uh, parents walking around a little bit in the area. One of the questions we are wondering, and perhaps they are wondering as well, what is being announced or what are parents being told as far as reunification with their students? Uh, or, or is there a lockdown currently underway at the... So it's, it's clear that there's a, a lockdown on the campus. We've not seen long lines of students walking out. There are no buses there to carry those students to some other location. Um, schools have different safety protocols for a campus shooting based on what they knew has taken place or is taking place. In other words, if this were a situation where they felt the campus needed to be evacuated. Uh, we would see buses arriving uh, at a different door, perhaps a south side door, uh, a back door, where we then see students at some point being led by officers out. I don't think we're gonna see that. Uh, if the facts that we are told uh, are correct, then the shooting took place, the shooter fled the campus, there was pursuit and that person may well be in custody. We see what looks to be some squad cars uh, pulling away at the moment. And so that's where we are. But as I was saying, there's a different response based on what they knew in the, in the umbrella, if you will, of shoot, school shooting responses. Yeah, and certainly in the aftermath, whenever you have violence on a campus and a student who is wounded, taken to the hospital, 
you look at the response before we're able to get detailed official information. You look at the response from these aerial shots and these ground cameras and you, you observe the officers to find out their level of intensity. Are they running to different positions and, and, and conferring very, very intensely and coming up with a response in the moment? Instead, we're seeing what looks like a lower intensity response. Certainly, there's a lot of resources at the campus right now, but uh, I've yet to see uh, an officer on the ground there uh, really moving quickly or getting into position or any of those other images we're accustomed to seeing after a, after a school shooting. I think it's safe to say we are beyond that point now, uh, based on the images that we're seeing. I think it's safe to say we are beyond that point. I, even those officers that we see standing around talking, none have uh, what you would call uh, a defensive stance. They're not seemingly needing to try and protect themselves from what might happen. I, so I think it's safe to say we're beyond that point. But again, we don't have an official word. It just appears based on, on their posture that they've taken a deep breath, a sigh of relief here as well. Um, the district has posted on Twitter, X, formerly known as Twitter, and they've also posted on Facebook. So uh, parents can turn there to social media to get information. Let's go now to Alex Boyer on the ground outside. I believe you got a parent with you, Alex? Yes, I'm, I'm here right at the corner of the high school. You can see, uh, first, if we reference here, Larry, you can see officers on scene uh, having this area shut down leading into uh, the high school here. Lots of, of uh, first responders, as you might imagine. And, of course, lots of parents are starting to arrive here. I, I have these parents that I just uh, kind of walked up with you as they started to let us down the block. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. I know it's a really fluid situation. Uh, you have a child at the school? Yes, uh, Legend Williams. Okay, and, and tell me, you've had a chance to talk to him by phone? Yes, that's how we found out about the active shooting. He called us and notified us that there was something going on at the school. The school didn't notify us at all. We still haven't gotten a text message or a call from the school about the incident. I know a parent never wants to be on the receiving end of that. Uh, Dad, maybe tell me how you were feeling about this. I know you were frustrated walking down here. You talked about some of the security measures that are already in place at the school. I did, I did. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, I've never seen this many Dallas PD here. I, and, and, around this area until something bad happens. You had mentioned, though, that there are metal detectors. Metal de here. They have metal detectors, wands, police, security. They even changed the policy to where you couldn't have dark backpacks. You have to have a clear one. But yet, a gun is in that school. Um, I know you guys are relieved, obviously, to hear your, your son's OK. How does he sound? I know that this has to be traumatizing for both you and him and everybody involved. For sure. When I talked to him on the phone, he definitely sounded really nervous and concerned, um, eager to try to get out of the building as fast as possible. But of course, the teachers and the police were not letting them out. So hopefully, you know, we can when we get him out here, we can get him calm and get his mental on track, because this is definitely going to be traumatizing for a lot of these students. I bet. Thank you both for speaking with me. Thank I, you. Uh, my thoughts are with you all as well. And uh, Larry, I know it's a little challenging here, but maybe if we can spin around, you can get a perspective here and see just how many parents are beginning to line up here. Uh, the district, of course, um, you know, is, is they are sending um, notifications on, on social media, on Facebook. Um, we got a message from the district a short time ago that says all students and team members are safe at Wilmer Hutchins High School as we have initiated our safety protocol. They say police are on site to ensure uh, that school remains secure. And at at this time, though, they are asking for everyone to refrain from coming to the campus uh, as they limit access inside. They say that parents will receive a letter with more details. But again, as you can imagine, guys, um, hearing that your uh, kiddo is at a school uh, where there has been uh, uh, an apparent shooting is distressing. And, and I'm sure getting this message as is apparent from seeing the parents we see arrive here at the edge of the school, that parents aren't necessarily going to uh, listen to those instructions as they want to be able to put hands on their child, make sure that they are okay, and of course, take them away from uh, no doubt what has become a traumatic situation here at the school this morning. Alex, Back to you. Uh, Sean, here, let me ask you. I mean, first, let's talk about that. It is human nature. My child's in that school, 
and it's human nature to head there because our defensive mechanism, our protective mechanisms kick in for our family. Um, as the parents are coming, have you heard any word yet? I understand that the Williams family just said they hadn't received any text message or anything like that from the school proper. But have you heard any word about whether the students will be moved to a reunification center or will it be a, a continuing lockdown and eventually released to their families from school? So we got on scene, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago, Sean, and uh, we actually had to park on a service road coming off the exit to the highway because uh, some police have that um, blocked off. So initially we were standing at the corner there along with parents who wanted to get down to the point where we are finally at. Initially, police were keeping us at bay there, I think for the reason, uh, as we mentioned, with the district initially putting out that statement online saying that uh, they want wanted to um, uh, ask parents not to come here and that uh, a letter would be sent out with more details. But as you might imagine, Sean, and being a parent yourself, knowing that uh, parents wanted to get down here, wanted to be able to take their child home if need be. So eventually I heard one of the Dallas police officers, I don't know if it's with uh, the district PD or Dallas PD, uh, finally uh, say to the other officer, hey, let them down. Uh, it sounds like they're going to be releasing the students. So that is what I heard from an officer on scene here. As you know, in these situations, very fluid. So right now we're all kind of in a holding pattern here. I am standing here along with these parents, along with the couple that you heard. Uh, I was actually walking down the street uh, with them, uh, listening to them talk to their son on the phone. Uh, so getting that kind of uh, uh, interaction with the family members uh, just as I was arriving on scene. So that is what I know at this point as it pertains to that. All right, great eyes and ears and great work, Alex. Uh, Stephen Dial has joined you uh, at the campus. He's on the other side of the yard, I think. And let's go to Stephen now. Stephen, can you hear me? As he described that. Yes, sir, we see you, Stephen. We're not too far from Alex. Yeah, we're not too far from Alex. As he described, uh, basically everyone is getting off where they can, where, you know, the police officers uh, have the road blocked off and kind of walking down. So this is the closest vantage point that all of the media has. I'm going to step out of the shot right now. Uh, we're looking at a little, uh, a couple of different things. Uh, we're not too far from Alex, but a different vantage point. Um, as you can see, the officers and what appears to be some parents, possibly students, um, are standing on, on the on the sidewalk there in front of uh, the campus. A and also over here in the grass, it appears to be a parent and possibly a student uh, talking. Now, since we have arrived on the scene and we got here not too much later than Alex, uh, there has been some fall off, some uh, law enforcement officials leaving the scene and also some Coming back to the scene, uh, I know you mentioned a few minutes ago uh, some DPS troopers arriving on the scene. We were right behind them, uh, but some uh, Dallas Fire Rescue, uh, more medical type uh, officials have left the scene. Some of them have left the scene. So, of course, it's fluid. Uh, the good news is, and I know you guys have been saying all morning, the good news is Dallas ISD is confirming that there is currently no active threat, currently no active threat at Wilmer Hutchins at this high school. Uh, we know that Dallas Fire Rescue got here I and mean, got a call to an active shooter uh, at 1036 this morning. But as of this hour, as of this minute, no current active threat on campus. Well, that's the best news that has come out of this today. We're so glad about that, as well as the fact that, yes, there's a student that's been injured, uh, wounded, Dan Godwin, and that's always horrible for anyone to suffer gunshot wound. But prayerfully, the wounds are not going to be life-threatening. Prayerfully, that student can make a full recovery. Um, and this is going to be part of the investigation. You heard the parent, uh, the father of Legend Williams, say they have backpacks. Uh, they have clear backpack rule. They have uh, magnetometers. They have wands. Uh, they have officers on campus. And, and yet the question is, how did this person get in, that that's always the question when something like this happens, especially after Uvalde, Dan Godwin, and statewide districts had to implement yeah. more intense security procedures. Yeah, the uh, certainly the intensity of the security measures taken after Uvalde, it's a story in the news practically every day. And Sean, 
based on that one credible source he had, uh, we're talking about a student who entered Wilmer Hutchins High School, entered a building uh, with a firearm. Uh, that's again the initial preliminary reports and did fire a shot at another student. Uh, that other student was wounded in the leg, taken to the hospital, and we're not hearing anything beyond that about that student's condition. Does not sound like a life-threatening uh, emergency, a situation, uh, but we will await uh, further uh, medical updates <clears throat> about the student who was uh, wounded this morning at uh, 1036 at Wilmer Hutchins High School. Uh, the, the shooter, uh, from what we understand, right after the incident, uh, fled the building, was outside the campus, and headed towards the uh, athletic complex. And at some point, uh, as a result of a pursuit, it appears that the uh, shooter was taken into custody. But that is a very preliminary report. That is something, of course, we're trying to get some confirmation on. And uh, there's, of course, a number of other questions we'd like to ask of the officials in the area. They're certainly acutely aware of Okay, yeah. uh, great news. There's a briefing from Dallas ISD, we believe, or, or their police department. Now, let's see if we can pick that up and join that in progress uh, at the campus. Suspect in custody. Well, we don't got no information about we, my child. The, but I want my child out because y'all can't let me. Everybody, she, she, not protect everybody is she secure not, inside this class. I'm not high, I just want to say, I want mine out. And she I want mine out. And we have several y all, y all, officers y inside. Right I want a real good lawyer. Because that's negligence. Yeah, let me, so emotions are raw. And, and it's understandable. Parents having seen other things happen in other schools, parents are on edge. They want their children now. They want to hug their children. The good news, as our source reported, suspect in custody. So that Dallas ISD police officer, Dan Goblin, was trying to talk to some parents, and it wasn't actually a press conference yet, uh, but he was trying to put their fears at ease in uh, mamas right now just want to hug their children. Yes, and what we have is a school on lockdown uh, following this incident. Uh, we apparently do have an update, or we're going to check in again with Alex Boyer. Alex? Hey, Dan, and, and I don't know if our, our camera was hot when this was going on. I think I heard Sean mentioning emotions are high, and indeed uh, that is the case, as, as you may be able to still hear behind me. Uh, parents uh, just getting a brief um, uh, update from district police. Uh, an officer uh, kind of summoned all the parents around who have gathered here at the corner of the school and said, hey, parents, come over. Let me give you an update. Uh, when they came over, uh, the officer said, um, did inform them that one one person uh, had been shot, uh, that somebody else, uh, I believe she said, was taken into custody. Um, that part is unclear, but I do recall him saying that one person uh, had been shot and that no one else was injured. And at this point, what they were doing was uh, going through the uh, classrooms, uh, following their own procedure uh, that they have to make sure that the school is clear and safe and that then they would reunify uh, the students with their parents. Uh, that was basically it. It was, as, as Sean mentioned, not a press conference but of course parents um, having their first opportunity to speak with police began asking questions uh, of that officer who uh, really was just there to provide an update uh, he wasn't able to really give any more specific details which is then when parents uh, with their emotions running high of course wanting more details wanting to be able to get their kid out of that school um, decided to uh, uh, started getting a, a little heated uh, I need to uh, move over a little bit police are asking us to move out of the way the bus are getting here to uh, pick up the students. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send that back to you momentarily as, as we kind of readjust here. But what you're seeing right now are the school buses coming through, uh, no doubt uh, picking up the students who um, 
uh, don't know at this point if they're going to be sent elsewhere for reunification or how that's going to play out. That was one of the questions that the uh, parents had here of that officer who came to give them that update. And again, that officer is saying that uh, it, it was unclear to him at this point how that reunification would happen. But as you're seeing right here live right now, uh, district school buses are arriving. Uh, so they have opened the roadway uh, at least momentarily to allow these school buses through. But looking back, uh, I still see that there are um, officers with emergency lights uh, keeping the access road that we are on. Uh, it's seemingly closed uh, to uh, the driving public. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Alex Boyer, reporting live for us at Wilmer Hutchins High School. So we were talking about not seeing the buses earlier. Yeah. Now we see them and we know the reunification is going to take place. If they're going to put them on the bus, they're going to take them to another location. All right, and we're continuing to follow this story uh, this morning at Wilmer Hutchins High School. Fox 4 News at noon is starting right now. You're watching Fox 4 News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. The story we're following this morning, uh, 1036 AM, a report of a student at Wilmer Hutchins High School, uh, Southern Dallas County, was shot, suffered a leg injury in that incident uh, by, we're, from what we understand, another student, but that's one of the questions we're still trying to find out. The shooting itself, Sean, from what you've been able to find out, We believe that happened in inside. the school. We believe the shooting happened in the school. One student shot, the shooter leaving the campus, leaving the building, uh, pursued by authorities, and that person is in custody. We know that. That is good news. The district also issuing a statement earlier this morning saying, in part, all students are safe, according to the district, and quote, as we have initiated our safety protocols. And when we talk about protocols, well, we're seeing a live picture now from Sky 4. Uh, there are more school buses arriving. Uh, apparently, from what we can tell, the school was placed on lockdown, and then officers entered the school building, going room to room, uh, checking every part of the building to make sure it is secure and that there is no further threat to students. Uh, the school buses arriving, uh, that tells us the students will be loaded onto those buses and taken to a reunification center, a location off campus, but we don't know what that location would be yet. Right, but the district, in their protocol plan, they have for each campus a location near there where they will take students that's been identified. Could be a church, could be a library, could be another school campus, but there's a place that's already been identified where these students will be taken today. Yes, yeah, certainly every school in the state of Texas throughout the United States, in fact, plans for this kind of incident. They uh, do meticulous pre-planning so that when the worst happens, as in a shooting inside a school building, everyone knows what to do and how to respond. Again, from uh, the, the shooter we can confirm is in custody, one student injured, shot in the leg, and uh, we do want to now check in with Stephen Dial, who is just alongside the campus. Stephen. Yeah, and right now the parents have actually been let further down. So we talked about those buses. The buses have pulled in front of the school, but then you also saw those parents that we showed moments ago, some of which were very upset uh, and emotional, wanting to be reunited with their children. Now officers have let them come down uh, basically to the front of the parking lot of Wilmer Hutchins High School, and those buses, about six of them, um, have lined up uh, on the curbside in front of the school. Just to recap for those who maybe weren't in our coverage when we cut in, uh, as you mentioned, at least one person, a student, shot where we don't know the extent of their injuries, but Dallas Fire Rescue confirmed uh, that they arrived here uh, two calls around 1036 this morning of an active shooter at the time. Now, according to an officer who just briefed parents, that officer told the parents that uh, they have one person in custody and we are working to try to get more information. That was the latest information that we had so far as to 
if the person's in custody officially, we know that there is one person in custody, we know officially that one person has been injured and transferred to the hospital. We don't know the extent of his or her injuries though. But the main thing right now, the latest development as you can see unfolding right now live is the parents have been escorted down by officers to be reunified with their children and then the buses are in front of the school right now. And from what you can tell then, Stephen, uh, are, are you seeing any students yet being loaded onto the buses? It doesn't appear that there's a lot of that kind of activity yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, and you see about six buses. I know we're showing Sky 4 and on the ground. About six buses lined up. I see two people uh, walking towards the buses. Uh, likely school officials. Uh, they're probably just getting them in an orderly fashion uh, to get on the bus. And then the confusion now probably will be making sure that children don't get on the bus and their parents are right here in the front parking lot. So that may cause some confusion. We don't know exactly where they'll be transported, uh, but the fact that officers let the parents walk uh, further down with them to the front of the school, they may be trying to figure out, okay, whose parent is here and whose parent is not here to, to make sure a child is not getting on the bus and being taken somewhere else. Yeah, and we, we certainly, uh, a little bit earlier this morning, we did see some very exasperated parents, uh, very emotional. They were very anxious to actually physically see their kids, uh, give them a hug and uh, find out how they are doing. A totally understandable response from a parent. Uh, it's a very challenging situation for everyone involved when an incident like this uh, occurs. Again, the, the best news that we're hearing is that the suspect is in custody, or a suspect is, and that uh, the district says all students are safe, and that a lockdown uh, was imposed in uh, on Wilmer Hutchins High School uh, while the school was, uh, while officials went through, made sure the school was secured. All right, and Stephen was talking about some of the parents being uh, out in front of the school there uh, near him. They've been able to come down a little closer. We see the buses now. We know some type of reunification is going to take place. He mentioned that that the district, the school officials may be trying to figure out who are the parents on scene and who are their students and maybe they will connect them before they move to another location. Not sure on that yet. Let's turn now to Alex Boyer. He's been talking to some parents and I think he's with some now. Alex. Hey guys, I am. Uh, as, Steve, as Stephen mentioned, you know, those buses, as you saw uh, when I spoke with you last, uh, were let down the road here in front of the school. Uh, don't know where they've gone. Oh, I see them now. Uh, they're in the roundabout here, uh, no doubt, for uh, uh, students to get on board whose parents are not here. But as you see now, a large gathering of parents. Um, this is uh, increased slightly from uh, when we were held at the corner as more and more parents begin to make their way through uh, the perimeter and get up to the school to be able to uh, pick up their child. Now, when they walked up here, um, there are um, district employees with vests on, red vests that say public information on it, and then they were giving uh, cards out to parents um, before they can reunify with them. Ma'am, can I talk to you one second, live on Fox 4? Uh, we are live. Can you tell me with the uh, paper that was given to you, what are they asking of you and what's going to happen next? I haven't got my paper yet. I, okay. I, let me go find out what Okay, okay about right. yes, there here. is a, a person in the red vest you need to talk to that has okay. that paperwork. Okay, I appreciate, appreciate that. that. Uh, but we do know that, that there are parents filling out cards uh, and again, uh, putting their child's name on there, uh, the parent's name, and then that way when the students are let out, they are going to be able to reunify that student uh, with their parents. So uh, a lot of, uh, of, of parents here, of course, uh, feeling anxious, uneasy, again, as we've been talking about, want to be able to uh, lay eyes and hands on their kiddos. Uh, and it looks like uh, right now maybe the district may be providing some sort of update to parents um, as uh, I see them gathering uh, more closely here. I see that there is a, an officer on the other side of the yellow tape uh, as well as one of those public information officers with the red vest um, uh, talking to parents. So it seems like uh, uh, shortly, we hope, uh, you know, these things are very fluid, that at some point these kids will be let out front of the school and that the parents who are here, it sounds like, will be able to take their uh, child home.
home. Now, I also did have a chance to speak with uh, one other parent um, a little earlier today about her feelings about uh, what transpired and her receiving a call from her son saying he was inside uh, when another student was shot. Take a listen. Hopefully, you know, we can, when we get him out here, we can get him calm and get his mental on track because this is definitely going to be traumatizing for a lot of these students. Yeah, indeed. And so a lot of conversations are going to be had, no doubt, with these parents not wanting to have this kind of conversation uh, with their kid. Uh, but this is a situation, sadly, that they find themselves in. Uh, so we're going to continue to monitor uh, this perspective of it, uh, see how this develops. But again, a, a step forward, at least, with uh, parents being allowed to go down the street. It seems like there is uh, some kind of unified process um, where, uh, again, these uh, information officers, in these vests are able to hand out these cards. Larry, if you can hear me, can you pan over here and show uh, these gentlemen here in the red vest? I don't know if they're visible, but if you're a parent watching this right now and are coming down here, these are the gentlemen you need to find, the ones with the red vest. It either says reunification staff on the back, like the gentleman on the right, or public information officer on the left. Any of those uh, staffers with that red vest, they will be able to provide you with that card that has all of the information the parents need to fill out for that reunification process, uh, hopefully uh, a step in the right direction. Alex, Guys. yeah, good work, Alex. Uh, it, it's organized chaos, right? The district has a plan and we're seeing it unroll in front of our eyes. The, the folks to, uh, easily to identify in the red vest to help get information from parents and proof that this is really Sean Rabb's parent out there to pick them up. You know, really good information from you, good images. We saw uh, a father, uh, looks like a father or dad with his arm around his child talking to them. Uh, as the woman said in your interview, Ms. Williams, we're going to need to get his mental on track and that's going to include yeah. counselors from the district next week when school reopens. Yeah. Good work, Alex. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to take a short break here as we continue covering the shooting at Wilmer Hutchins High School on Langdon Road in Southern Dallas County. The Eagles, uh, the name of that school's mascot today though uh, a tragedy on campus thankfully everyone is alive but uh, a traumatic time for parents students and staff at the hutch we'll be back
Well, after a stormy start to the
Shooter is in custody. Want to check in now with Fox 4's Alex Boyer, who's right next to the campus. Alex. Hey, Dan, and just minutes ago, uh, parents got an update from police. It sounds like that reunification is going to happen in just a few minutes. I want to bring in uh, Sade. I know you're uh, a parent here. You were able to listen in. Um, uh, what were they saying? Uh, they were saying that the piece of paper that they gave us with the student's name on there, they're going to walk us to the front, and we're going to give it to another team, and then they're going to allow the students to come to the front, and they're going to bring them out. Okay. Yeah. They said it kind of sounded like they might happen in a few minutes. Yeah, they said it was like the next two or three minutes. Just stand right here, stand clear. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know it's been a stressful time for you. Uh, how do you feel with this step forward, hopefully getting one step closer to being able to get in there? I mean, this is really, really crazy because this is an old school of mine. I, I used to go to school here, and to see the crime go like this, like, where, where are the... It sounds like they're letting you all go. Okay. Where are the police at when yeah. this stuff happened? Like, are y'all searching these kids? You need to get these kids that ran out of here. They ran out of the school and it, you know, they don't even know that they ran out. So how you keeping tabs on who or who's the shooter and who's ran out? Yeah, but very yeah. very fluid time. I wish you the best. Thank you for Thank speaking you. with Thank us. You. Just a minute. So again, it kind of sounds like any minute now this reunification is going to happen. So we're of course going to keep an eye on that and uh, see uh, parents and uh, reunified uh, with their students hopefully shortly. Dan. Yeah, just as you called it, some of that's going to take place right there at the school. Mm -hmm. uh, great work on the ground, Alex. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more coverage of uh, this breaking news today at Wilmer Hutchins High School.
That's our opening shot. Yeah. Things got hot. Things got hot. Did I look like I had some butt smash? Sign, I see one right there. I see one right here. Walk out with a stretcher. It's empty, but it's a stretcher. I don't know why. I don't know where they're gonna walk. This might not be a shit, but it was a stretcher, isn't it? Oh, we need to watch your back. I mean, I would assume if they do do a pressure, they're going to do it where they see all the media. Missing nothing wherever we go. 